Hey guys, so I just wanted to do a video here today talking about potbelly pigs. It has been just a little bit over a year exactly, well not exactly obviously, but a little over a year since I have owned pigs and um, sorry, let me just adjust this really fast. And I kind of wanted to talk about the pros, the cons, um, some myths and some just basic care needs and kind of like what I've learned throughout the whole year of being a pig mom or pig owner and actually breeding potbelly pigs. <laughs> so first I want to just say potbelly pigs today, nowadays, most likely you're going to find a potbelly pig for sale or someone breeding them or someone giving away a potbelly pig. Um, more than likely it's going to be a mixed breed. Now, um, this is something that I have learned actually since owning pigs. Um, I just thought the only kind of a mini pig was a potbelly pig or some sort of a mutt. Like I just thought there was all potbelly pigs and that was it. But it comes out there is just like so many different types of mini breed pigs. Um, I have Penelope in the background here. She's uh, she's taking a little nap back here for me and it's kind of hard to get her in the camera but anyways so um yeah so a couple of myths that i kind of wanted to point out to that i've learned um is that mini pigs do not stay mini <laughs> well this is something that i actually um when i was first telling people maybe a couple years ago um well i've always wanted a, a potbelly pig but um i didn't really actually take into consideration that their size um potbelly pigs can get big they can get up to two to three hundred pounds i mean they shouldn't get more than like 150 200 pounds if they're bigger than that um it probably is genetics but it's because they're obese more than likely and you could tell that they're obese is i'll just gonna use penelope here for an example um they end up getting blind fat so they end up getting this big lump of fat right here and fat all around their face she's borderline she's actually not she's normal size she's just a big pig now my other girl olive who's in the background over there with her daughter um, she's a smaller size and <laughs> so I just wanted to point that out right away because most people and I noticed this especially when I was breeding pigs and selling them people always came up to me or asked me before they um, the number one question they would always say was um, how big do they get and I want the small ones I don't want the big ones well there's no such thing. <laughs> I have learned that it's just pure genetics because out of the same litter of pigs that I received, especially with Olive, um, I had some big ones, I had some small ones, I had some stumpier ones, some longer ones. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. So number one myth, mini pigs do not stay mini. Um, if someone tells you that there is a micro pig, they're lying to you. Um, now, are there some breeds or some genetics in pigs that make them maybe 60 pounds sure of course there is but um even then they're not going to stay tiny like i'll tell you right now olive at her estate which i wish she'd come over here maybe she'll come by later um she's about 60 pounds right now and she's maybe an average size penelope's a little bit bigger she's just a bigger pig but i just wanted to make sure i mentioned that first so don't be alarmed. <laughs> There's still many because they are comparing them to farm hogs, which are, um, you know, any sort of pig that goes to butcher, you know, they're looking at 200 plus um, that grow super duper fast and are lean meat. So um, mini pigs are, they stay short to the ground. They are fatter and they're just not typically raised for meat. Um, so just wanted to throw that out there. So something else that I have learned um, through the years of owning pigs is that they are super smart. Now, I posted on like some of social media pages um, and even on here as well, but they just are so smart. Like, and I know people have tell you, oh, they're so smart, whatever, but you don't take any consideration. When I, okay, let me just slow down. When someone said to me, oh, they're really smart, like I just thought, Oh, they're smart like a dog like you can teach them um no and stay and like um you know maybe a few tricks because i've seen pigs do tricks i'm not even going to talk about that but what i'm saying by smart is they can figure out how to open up gates they can push out of gates they know how to they dig i mean i didn't know that but they're just super duper smart 
So <laughs> just remember that if, especially if you're doing, which I do recommend keeping them outdoors, um, you have some strong fencing. That is something that we had to redo recently. If you're following on my channel frequently is that you need some good fencing for pigs. Um, now people, I've have goats and when it comes to the pigs and the goats, the um, pigs actually have given me more trouble with the fencing than the goats. And if everyone always said, oh, make sure you have good fencing for goats. But I have Nigerian dwarfs and I have not had an issue with fencing. I mean, thus far, um, fencing has all been the pigs. And not even this pig. It's it's the one pig. <laughs> it's all it. So <clears throat> just take that in consideration that pigs are very smart, which also brings me to my next topic is that they like routine. Um, now some people prefer not to do routines with their animals because they don't want their animals <clears throat> to be set on a schedule. They don't want them to get, um, hurt or whatever. Like if they are go out of town, they don't want them to like be upset. Um, but pigs do like a routine. They like to wake up in the morning and have their breakfast roughly around the same time, their dinner roughly around the same time, um, snacks. They, um, they do appreciate, I'm just looking around cause I've got dogs barking. <laughs> they like, um, to receive attention like they they do get lonely and so yeah so just make sure you take into consideration that they're very 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 smart animals and that they probably will test you when it comes to certain <laughs> things depending especially on how you are housing them um <clears throat> so um another thing that i have learned um from the whole year of learning being a pig mom is that pigs are herd animals. I always thought that you can have a pig and you can pretty much have a dog as its companion. Well, that, well, in my circumstance, honestly, has turned out to not be true. Oh, my rooster, Caesar Hawk. <laughs> um, so they do not prefer to be companions with dogs. Dogs and pigs play differently. So my pig is getting into something. You see her? Again, super smart. Um, so they play differently. So dogs might not react when a pig wants to play and maybe take it as an aggression behavior. And then it can tend to lead to a disaster and, you know, possibly your pig getting hurt or killed. Um, <clears throat> so just make sure that you don't never leave dogs alone with pigs. Um, pigs and dogs can get along great but I just highly never recommend leaving the pig and a dog unattended just because of those reasons alone. You know, dogs are dogs and pigs are pigs. Um, prey and predator animals, you know. <clears throat> so um, I kind of went over that <laughs> they are herd animals, which I'll come back to that because um, they do like to have companions. So as you can tell, my pig is like, if you can hear in the background, she's rooting up some dirt. So they can get very, very bored. So having toys for them to play with, especially if they're alone or just always having someone there to play with them or keep them company is key. And if you do not have the time to do that or don't have the um, sources to provide them with some stimulant toys, then getting another pig is always best. I, I firmly believe that most animals, not all, but most animals, um, tend to live a happier life when they have a companion animal and pigs to me are no exception especially because they are herd animals they feel safer with their herd <laughs> she came over for a belly rub we'll get to that topic in a second with charlotte yeah she's so cute so um so yes just make sure your piggy has a piggy friend and like i said many people do keep them alone and they live happy lives but Again, if you're not able to provide them with that extra time and love and provide them with that, I guess, be your, your piggy's companion, then I highly suggest getting another pig. Um, again, it's just my personal opinion, and I think a lot of people that maybe are around pigs and know pigs um, will agree. So, <laughs> here's my pretty girl. She's so pretty. She's so pretty. So, Miss Charlotte is actually here to... Um, let us talk about our next subject and that is again piggies love attention they love belly rubs what is my kid doing <laughs> she loves belly rubs so if you again can give them attention they will just be petting your hands and they do make great pets right miss char 
You feel good. She's so cute. Now, Charlotte, we've had, again, if you've known for a while, um, she was born here. So she is about six months old and she is just super adorable. So I'm actually going to do maybe an updated video later on, on maybe the first year of owning her um, because we did get our girls, if you are new, um, once they were two years old. So we've had them for a year. They were two, they're going, they're, they are three years old now. Um, so it was a little bit of a learning curve. Um, and that will bring us to our next topic. And that is just, um, patience. Um, if you are a new pig owner, you got your new pig, whether it's a young little one like Miss Charlotte here, or it's an older one. And I do highly recommend adopting older pigs because they're awesome and all lots of piggies need homes. Um, but what I do recommend definitely is patience because pigs are not like dogs. Um, you know, if you get to a shelter, of course dogs are going to be scared, but there's always going to be that handful that just wagging their tails and they're happy to see you. And they are just pretty much a couple days and they're just petty in your hands, right? Cause dogs are man's best friend. That's what they were bred for, for years and years and years. Um, well, don't expect that from your pig <laughs> and do not be discouraged if your pig seems like he's scared, scared of you, um, because they probably are. Um, so bring me back to my next, my last topic was, was, um, that they're prey animals. So pigs, um, because they're super intelligent and because they need time to process, they will learn who, um, is their, you know, companion. They will, le they will learn that through food, number one, and just love and attention. And they, like I said, belly rubs is key. They will, you give them belly rubs. They just, they love it. So, um, let's say you bring your new pig home and they're scared, kind of off to the corner, making their little grunt sounds because that's what they do when they're scared. Um, you have to just be patient. You can't just come at a pig on high fours, bending over, you know, stomping over, <laughs> them, chasing them. Don't ever chase a pig. They will run from you with scared for their life. Um, you have to get down on all fours, get down on the ground, get down to their level and um, just kind of just take your time. Let them come to you. Even if it's just for like if they come to you and even if it's just a little tap on the nose every single day um, until they warm up to you. And I promise you they will because piggies just love this. They love their belly rubs. <laughs> like she just came right over to me and just plopped right in her front and showed me her belly, which means she is totally content and she's happy to get her belly rub by me. So, <laughs> so yeah, just owning pigs. Now I'm going to show you Miss Penelope's coming over here and picking on Miss Charlotte here because Charlotte is at the bottom of the pecking order. She's the top hog here. This right here is her sister. This is her mama, mama and daughter. But Miss Auntie here is not is not too friendly with Charlotte. So Charlotte's gonna get up and move. Um, now that kind of behavior is something that's typical with pigs. Like I said, you're gonna have the one who's kind of like the leader. We say top hog. Um, and then you have the bottom of the pecking order, which is Charlotte, because she's the baby. <laughs> so to correct a pig, another thing that I've learned, it's called move the pig. You're going to take her and you're literally going to push her. Well, I'm not going to do it right now because I'm not standing up and kind of direct her in a different direction. And she'll probably scream bloody murder, but she's going to realize that I don't like that behavior and I'm pushing her out of the way. Kind of what she was doing to Charlotte, right? She was kind of pushing her, moving her out of the way because she decided that she didn't like that. She was laying right here next to me, whether that's jealousy or she just is annoyed with her or whatever. So that's how we discipline pigs. We never, ever, ever, ever hit a pig. You always just want to give them love and attention. And if you don't like their behavior, you move, you literally push them, don't shove, just kind of move them and push them into a different direction. You can use your foot, you can use your hand, not mean, you're not gonna kick the animal, but you're just gonna push them out of the way. It might take a few times, they might try to come back. You keep doing it until they just, till they realize that you're not, you're not giving up. So there is just kind of a learning curve when it comes to owning pigs as, which I didn't think I would have to. I thought, cause everyone always compared them to dogs and they're so different. I mean, there, there are certain things that you can take into consideration and in saying that they are like dogs, um, <laughs> but they're totally not. Um, 
I'm getting a little sidetracked here because, you know, she just wants super attention. Come here. Come here, Pinel. Come here. Come here, you dirty face. So, another thing I want to bring up. <laughs> I can't be so sidetracked with this one. <laughs> is um, piggies and their heat cycles. So, pigs go into heat every 21 days which is a lot. Now, I have two very good examples of um, what it looks like when girls go into heat. So um, we'll start with Miss Penelope here. So when she goes into heat, she's just extra whiny. Like she's super cranky, super whiny. Um, she sometimes, not always, will follow you because she just wants extra love and attention and belly rubs, um, which to me is fine. Like I'll deal with it, right? Now, we're talking about Olive, who's trying to get into the chicken coop right now because she's a bad girl. When she goes into heat, it is another story. She is like a bat from hell, <laughs> which is why, again, why we had to fix fences. Because she tries to escape because she has now discovered that the neighbors or her boyfriend lives next door. So every time she goes into heat, she breaks all the fences. She breaks into all the goat pens and everything, trying to get next door um, to her boyfriend. And it is such a pain in the butt. And I will tell you, it is, it's rough. It's a, and they are, you know, in heat for roughly three days out of the 21 days. So you have to deal with that every 21 days. And there are ways of getting that fixed by taking them to the vet and getting them spayed. Um, but it is rough on their bodies. They kind of have to go on their sideways, give them anesthesia, which pigs don't always do well with anesthesia. So if you are going to do it, I suggest doing it when they're younger, like Charlotte's age. Um, uh, we didn't do that, but, um, because I don't feel comfortable putting her under anesthesia, but, um, with the older girls, you know, I feel like they're probably past their prime as to getting, you know, putting on the table and doing their procedure because I just don't want to risk it. And it, you know, a lot of times piggies have a hard time, like I said, with anesthesia and coming out of it. Um, so it's just something that we're dealing with. And I think because of that, people don't take into consideration and then they wait too long and I get them fixed. And um, it's probably one of the top reasons why they get rid of their pigs because they don't understand why every month or so that um, their pigs just act like um, a raging lunatic. <laughs> and it's because they're in heat. Um, and boys is probably the same way. If they can sense a girl or go into wet sort of deal, um, they can break down fences as well and just kind of get into things that they shouldn't and can get aggressive, you know, to you, your family, um, pets and other pigs. Um, so again, it's just something that you want to be aware of and just be super cautious of. Um, <laughs> so a few basic care needs that you will need for your pig is obviously a bowl to drink out of. You can use a bucket or bowl. I prefer the shorter bowls because I notice that buckets, it's harder for them to get into because they really don't have tall necks. Um, and you know, their feed, which is a pellet feed, <clears throat> and it's a pot belly pig feed. Don't give them hog feed um, or anything that says grower feed on it because it will make them fat. And the number one cause of death in pot belly pigs is because they become obese. And they do become obese super duper fast if you overfeed them. So it's just usually a cup in the morning, a cup at night of their feed, and they are fine and they're ready to go. Uh, obviously, you can give them tons of veggies throughout the day. Fruits, you can give them as snacks. Don't give it to them a lot, a lot because it is high in sugar. Um, and they do sell pig treats as well. <laughs> here comes Miss Charlotte. Miss Charlotte, come here. Come here. Come here. And they just are super adorable. I mean, how could you not? How could you not resist that little face right there? She's so cute. <laughs> now pigs do have very sharp teeth and um, if you have smart children I mean I've gotten bit and um, not by purpose but they can accidentally bite you thinking that you have food in your hands if you go down to pet them um, so just be very cautious especially if you're handling a new pig um, you know they just they're they're used to you feeding them with your hands so I always suggest never feeding by your hand either put it in a bowl on the ground let them get it themselves there's no harm in it and it will save your fingers because <laughs> I learned my lesson especially with the younger ones 
feeding them carrots and stuff and they just accidentally nip your fingers because pigs kind of don't really have that great of eyesight because they're so low to the ground and their eyes are on each side of their head. So again, just take that into consideration and you guys will have a happy life together, huh? Yes. <laughs> She's back for more. Um, another thing that I strongly suggest that I just, I know my pigs just absolutely love and that is to have um, a kiddie pool for them because they just absolutely love to get wet and it's actually a must that they should have it, especially in hot summers, um, some sort of water um, daily basically because they, um, they can't sweat. Pigs cannot sweat. They don't have sweat glands. And, you know, lots of why pigs kind of get a bad rep for being dirty and playing in mud. They play in mud because, one, it's cooling to them and they use it as a basic sunscreen for their body. They will cover their body in the mud to, um, you know, again, use it as a sunscreen so they don't get burnt. Especially uh, if you have a light-skinned pig like Penelope there. Um, they can burn super, super easily in the sun and she actually does get sunburned and her skin starts to crack more than um, the darker colored pigs. Um, it, it's just a little bit more maintenance. I sometimes will get some baby uh, sunscreen and just kind of rub it on her. If I can, she runs for me. But basically behind the ears, um, like some cheeky parts, like cheeks, and then maybe like on her belly, just kind of like areas where I see it getting really, really red on her. What is Daniel doing? <laughs> So yeah, so that's basically it. Those are kind of like my tips that I have learned throughout the year of owning pigs. And I'm sure I've got a lot more to learn. Um, oh, and I didn't even bring up their hooves. Hoof care is very important. So, and I'm looking at Penelope there because her hooves are growing a lot faster than the other two. So um, it's basic needs. And if you have a little one like this, start young because it is a hassle once they're that age and they've never had their hooves trimmed or handled you're gonna have to call out some sort of professional or someone that deals with livestock um so what i do is since she's so comfortable here i kind of just i take my time and i kind of rub between her toes and i touch her hooves and i just kind of and if you could see there like her dew claw is super long so it needs a trim and i will just maybe i'll do another video like a more in detail video kind of like how i trim their hooves um because i'm basically learning on this one um i did have to call professional to do to do the other two they're kind of fighting with each other i don't know what they think they're getting in there but they both want it and so they're fighting over it um because they have never got their hooves trimmed um when they're in their comfortable state and i'm rubbing their bellies I do touch their hooves, but as soon as they see something sharp in my hand, they freak out and they run. And it's a safety thing. I don't want to hurt them or myself. So I do have to call somebody in to get them done. Um, now that I've kind of know a little bit more, I might try to do it myself again, but I just don't, again, don't want to hurt myself or them because I um, use really, really, really sharp trimmers. Um, basically the same trimmers you would use on your goats if you have goats. Um, basically the same thing. But I will definitely maybe do a video on that with Charlotte because I think that would be something fun to show. And I know that there are videos like that, but I just um, maybe show you guys how I do it. Maybe you'll learn something to try a different way. I don't know. But that's basically it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. A super long video. I don't know why it turned out to be so long. It wasn't going to be this long, but I'm just having fun here with the pigs. And it's a beautiful day outside. So I'll see you guys next time. Talk to you later. Bye.